Welcome back. And John Mitchell, it is good to see you again. Good to speak to you. You've got a big fight coming up this Saturday, 26th yep. of March in UAE Warriors, 28 against Marius Mazur, live in UFC Fight Pass. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, flying, Andy. It's good to see you again. It's been a minute now. So, uh, yeah, fe feeling great for us. I, I can't wait. Yeah, we're, we're kind of keeping tradition with getting the, the interview in pre-fight. So, uh, you know, we, we haven't spoke since last October. Obviously, you had the good win against uh, Constantine and Tellus. So, um, yeah. how has life been? It's been, a, what, four months, five months now since we last spoke. Yeah, it's been great. I, I've, I've just been training hard nearly d directly after that fight. Like, I, I had a week to myself, then I was straight back to it because uh, initially I thought I was fighting in January and then the show got pushed February and then I got pushed to March. So I've been uh, I've been in camp a long time for, th for this one now, so I can't wait to actually go out and do the thing. Did you get to see the UFC there at the weekend, actually? I meant to ask you this before yeah, we started unreal, recording. What did you think of it? It was unreal. It was class. It was class. It's like, there was some stat like that guy, Ilya Tuporia, something else. The yeah, fact that he not was crazy. Yeah, I, you know, I, the reason why I was kind of I wanted to bring that up to you is what really stood out to me from the card was just like the support and the fact that you know everyone, you know, we've heard everyone talk about how it's you know the golden generation, you know, a real strong British presence, UK MMA, and I just started thinking of Irish fighters and like the likes of yourself and other guys and prospects who are kind of rising. Like, is that when you see a card like that with huge support and a strong presence from a country? Um, does that kind of inspire you a little and say, I want that for, for me and for Ireland? Yeah, our time is coming. Like the, the next wave is coming quick. Like, like I, I think it's going to happen very soon, the next year, year and a half, next two years max. Like we're all going to be in there on these big cards in Ireland as well, I believe. So really looking forward to it. Yeah. So as we mentioned, you know, a dominant performance over in Tellus. Were you happy with the performance overall? How would you, how would you rate it? Yeah, very good. Like Natellus was well rated. Like like he he was six and one. He had he had belts at pro. He was winning all his jiu jitsu competitions. And like you can see from the fight, it's not just me talking. I absolutely smashed him. Like one of the rounds was ten eight. Um, it was funny because they, they came out calling me the grappler, but I was boxing with him. And the only mistake I made in the fight was I thought he was going to box too, and I got taken down. Uh, but reverse the position just smashed him grappling as well. So I I didn't make much mistakes in that fight. But it was also good because uh. I got, like, I didn't give away too much either. Like, for example, it was funny, when I fought Eric Nolan in my pro debut, or when I was amateur, people were saying I was just a striker. And now after my last two fights, they're saying I'm just a grappler. So now I'm looking forward to what they say after next week. Yeah, Jesus, I, for, I remember that Eric Nolan one well. I always remember just you, was it, he threw a high kick and then you kind of leaned back and, and gave the look away as if yeah, to say, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 because yeah, yeah. it, it was in Cork, so it's a bit of a show. Yeah, hundred percent. So overall, though, you were happy with the performance anyway. And like, was there anything that you you didn't get to show that you wanted to show against Intellis? Uh Yeah, like like uh, like my striking is 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 very high level. Like I I spar like elite Thai boxers out here all the time, elite level lads, and I know what I can do there. So not that I was disappointed that I didn't get to show up because I know I have a long career and it's going to come out a lot more. But just to show my boxing a bit more. But also like Natellis was was a good wrestler. He's winning all those, those juice competitions, and I smashed him there. So. No, I was happy. I was happy overall. Yeah, and we, you know, we talked in your last interview about the training that you do with Munir Laziz, and who else have you been working with ahead of this uh, this fight? Uh, there's always real high level lads coming through the camp. Like for example, uh, well, we Darren Till. I got to spar with Darren Till when he was out there. That was a big one. Um, one of my friends, Bilal, he's one of the best Thai boxers in the world. My my friend Mirko, who's five and zero now, and he's fighting on this card. He's like five time Uzbekistan national boxing champion. Um, then there's loads of Dagestani guys in the gym now as well. So uh, everyone and anyone, you know what I mean? Yeah. What was it like uh, sparring with Darren Till? How did those spars go? It was unreal, man. And like, like it just strengthens my resolve because I get to see my level. You know what I mean? I got to see my level against McGregor. I got to see my level against Till. He even gave me a good shout after it saying like, this lad's a monster. So I just can't wait to show that. And I, like, I know where I'm going and I know what I'm capable of. And those spars confirm it more. So I'm looking forward to showing everyone else again. Yeah, you know, when you're when you're sparring someone like Till, I know we talked last time about scar scarring, spar sparring even, uh, Conor McGregor. How hard do you go in those types of sparring? Like, is it a friendly, you know, kind of flowy spar, or is it, right, I'm going to try to take your head off type of spar? Yeah, to be fair, the spar with Till wasn't, like, very heavy like it was with Conor. Like, the spar with Till was uh, more controlled and more technical. Like, like always just because I'm cheeky, like, it picks up a bit. But uh, all, all, he, he was like, you know what I mean? Like he. What do you mean by cheeky? As well. You know, like like I do in my fights, I always talk and I always like, I'm like that when I spar as well. I kind of spar the same and I always spar hard. Like, uh, so 
but but he was keeping it relaxed. Yeah. Same. Would you be Would you be shit talking then during your spares? Always, always. Ask me nail disease. Always. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I love it. Like I love it, and like that when I fight, like it's a reflection of your personality, isn't it? So I always be talking in there. I was talking to Constantinus a good bit as well. Like when I hit him with the hook, I was telling him I heard him and all this stuff. So yeah. Um, well, what would you, what would you would it would just be saying that you heard him, or would you be saying anything else, or? It just depends on the moment, depends if I actually did hurt him or not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, I, I noticed this, I feel like we talk about this almost every time we speak, is the strong Irish presence that, like, you're surrounded by. I saw, like, Owen Shero was out there, uh, Matty Zaharov, yeah. Paul Redmond, you mentioned. Um, you know, th- there's a lot of Irish guys out in Dubai working now, is there? Yeah, yeah, there's people floating all the time. Like, that's a great gym, MTK Strong Gym, that we have there at the moment. Like, Paul Redmond was out here there last week. He's coming out again. Andy Ryan was out there. All the IMAF lads, when they're out here, they uh, they all at home at the MTK Strong Gym as well, you know? So, yeah, it's great. It's great. It's great to have those lads coming out here. Yeah, and what was it like working with Redzer? Obviously, you know, a legend of Irish, Irish MMA. It was unreal. It was actually unreal. Like, like he, he, he every, everyone knows he's a gent anyway, uh, but the training with him was class. Like, every time I did a session with him, like when I was doing with Andy and Kieran Davern when they were there, I learned something new all the time. And he was a perfect opponent for this guy I'm fighting because I was lucky enough that I got to spar Redzer. And, like, he's a whole lot better than this guy I'm fighting. But kind of similar, you know what I mean, in terms of, like, they both go for leg locks, but Redzer actually knows how to do it. Like, so it was unreal. It was class training with him. I can't yeah. wait for him to come back out again. Yeah, and you know, you seem to be kind of living the life. This, this, uh, really, uh, I get jealous basically looking at your. I told you the other day, I get jealous looking at your Instagram, like the life you're living out there. I saw you were hobbing, hobbing it up with uh, Tyson Fury there recently. So, you know, last time we spoke, it was Conor McGregor and the Mountain from Game yeah. of Thrones. Now it's Darren Till and Tyson Fury. You know, just another day in the life of John Mitchell, is it? Ah, uh, sure. Look, it didn't happen by accident. Like, <laughs> I worked hard to get here. Like, but no, no, no. I, I, I wasn't really. Uh, Tyson just did a visit into the gym. I, I wasn't having up with him as such. No, you didn't get to <laughs> didn't get to to spar boxing with him. No. Now I will leave that one off. Like, the, yeah. <laughs> too much trauma from my head. That one would be the final straw with Aaron McGuire back home. I'd say. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I come here. Did I notice that you got a new tattoo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, you know, I had like my spine tattooed or a sakyant in Thailand and I had like half my back bare. And I said when I wanted to go pro, I always had this idea of getting half it covered. And uh, I just had to find the right time to get it, you know. So now, now that I'm four fights in, going into my fifth, I got the rest of it done. It, yes. it, it suits the bill, the bill anyway, you know what I mean? You have to have a few tattoos if you're a fighter. <laughs> yeah, sure. What's an MMA fighter without a tattoo? You know what I mean? Like, t- tattoo is the best base for MMA, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes me punch five times harder as well. Yeah. So <laughs> what did you get? It's on your back, right? Yeah, I, I got a samurai, like, with my own Mayashi. Uh, like, he is a quote saying, like, generally speaking, the way of the warrior's resolute acceptance of death. And it's this book that I read when I was younger that really had a good effect on me. So, um, and even when I go into the fights, like, I just kind of have that mentality that it's, like, do or die. Like, so, do you know, go out there yeah. next week and bit a bit more do or dying, like. Is it, like, almost, is it important? Not, maybe not important, but, like, does it kind of get you in the zone by having that mentality? I saw you, you talk before posts about like guts and glory uh, or like no guts no glory type stuff yeah well it's just like you know i i think i'm, I'm so committed to the cause like uh like i'm i will move the country i train in the gym every day i do nothing else but this sport i got a big fucking samurai tattooed my back do you know what i mean like so it just it just strengthens my resolve even more not that i needed it like but uh yeah every time i look at it you know, i'm just i'm just about this life i'm i'm living and breathing it you know yeah, and like how are you, we? I asked you before we started recording as well. But like, how are you enjoying living abroad? Like, how are you enjoying living in Dubai? And and do you miss home? Yeah, like I love it. I love it. Like, like I'm lucky that every day I wake up. Like, I love Monday morning. Do you know what I mean? I, I love going to work. I love training every day. I love my team here. And then of course back home, I miss my mommy. Like, do you know what I mean? But I I'm gonna uh, treat her well after this fight, and I'm gonna call home to see her. But um, like I I love Ireland loads. But I'm definitely here for the future. You know. Yeah, and you know, I guess what do you miss most about about home when you're living abroad? Uh, my friends apart, apart from your mommy, obviously. Oh well, my well, <laughs> <laughs> my daddy. No, no, no. My my friends and family and uh, MMA Cork in the gym. You know what I mean? They were the most important things to me back home. So like, even even my friends back home, like I have a really good group of lads. They're sweethearts. Like they they're all booking off work for when I'm back and everything. So it's going to be a good two weeks. 
Yeah, and like you're sharing the card with with another Irishman, Will Flurry, he's fighting for the the middleweight title against Harry Silver, and, and then also a, a former two time opponent of yours, which 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 would be Kenny, uh, Kenny yeah, yeah. Uh, fighting the day after. Um, you know, does that kind of give you a bit of an extra boost knowing that you're going to be sharing, yeah. you know, the cards with Irish? It's class, it's unreal, it's unreal. I I really like Will, and I really like Kenny. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and as well, like like when I first started the sport way, way back in the day when I was just visiting MMA gyms, Will Flurry was there, and he was the man. So like, it's so cool that he's headlining this card and he's, he's such a top fella as well and then like I have so much time for Kenny because when I was amateur I couldn't get people to fight me and Kenny fought me twice and uh, now Kenny's absolutely smashing people at pro and uh, he, he's a top lad as well he always takes on hard fights so um, I, I can't wait for all three of us now to win over this weekend and I'll bring him out to Dubai with me go hobnobbing with the stars Yeah, <laughs> you, you mentioned in a post that 2021 was the best year of your life uh, wh- why was it the best year of your life? Uh, because you know, it was such a transition phase. Like, like I got out here, I said yes to every opportunity. I came out here really, really with not much of a pot to, uh, pot to piss in. Like, and, and now, and now I think I'm in a great situation. Like, like I'm, I'm doing well for myself. I got two big fights out there. I smashed them both. I got to set up a life for myself out here. And now I'm moving on to bigger things. And also, I got, I got to see how, how good I am as well. Like, like I got to spar all these good guys and fight these guys. And like, I just really, what I wanted to do came to actuality. Like everything I set out to do, especially because it seemed like. There was a time when I was in Cork that I was like, oh, fuck, this is getting hard. Like, like you know, it, it's kind of like life was pulling away against being an MMA fighter. But now I literally get to live and breathe it. Like, so yeah. What, what did you, position. when you were back in Cork, what did you like? What was it that was that was kind of pulling you back or were you finding difficult? Just, just, just so I, I was done college and stuff like that. And like, the, like in Dubai, I'm able to live away where I can like make good money and also just train twice every day. In Ireland, it was kind of getting to that thing where I needed a big boy job now. Like I was signed to Cage Warriors, so they're giving you about two euro a fight. Like, so like it was just a different uh, scope, you know. But um, and over here as well, like I live with career fighters, like so, like uh, for example, like Minier, like and Bruno Cavera, like my two main training partners, like their life is pro fighting, like how they make money is off professional fighting. So just the, the mindset's a bit different. Hmm. I mean, obviously, it's very common for you know fighters as they're starting their career, especially in Ireland. You know, t- as you said, most people don't have a pot to piss in, or you're working another job, or you're on a building site while you're trying to train. Yeah. Does it amplify, you know, the level of your training and and the the energy that you're able to put into your training by not having to worry about those things and you know being a bit more comfortable, I guess, you know, finance both financially and just like living standard. See, like some people are able to, uh, able to jug- juggle it absolutely fine. Like, like I remember Neil Siri was always a big advocate of having a job. Um, like a, a lot of fighters can. For me personally. I just wait for it this way because my whole focus throughout the week is training. And like, it nearly seems like the better I do at, at fights, the more clients I get and, and the better financially I do then again. You know what I mean? So I just prefer that my whole life now is um, fighting. I think I think some people also like a break, you know, they like having fighting as their one thing, then they a break from like that they do something else, maybe it's their job. But for me, I like, I just love fighting so much that I want it to be encompass everything I do, you know? Yeah. So it was I, just for me, I can't speak for everyone, but for me, it works out better for me. 100% and you know I asked you there you know why was 2021 your your best year yet uh 2022 I imagine you want to top 2021 so how can you make 2022 a better year it's it's already going it's already going better because like uh my situation's better again and uh I feel like I'm you know like already with this camp you know like my, my coach Aaron McGuire used to always say that the fight's only ever the, ever the cherry on top you know what I mean because you're in this for a long time like you're not just in a fight for a fight basis and I can already see how much I've improved you know, I've, I've improved tenfold since my Constantinus fight. I'd love to fight the John that fought Natellis now, you know what I mean? So uh, already I feel like, huh? That'd be a good scrap. Yeah, yeah, it'd be a good scrap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, already now um, I've improved tenfold. Like, so I just, it's already been a good year, you know? Yeah. And like, you know, looking ahead to this, uh, this fight, what do you know much about Marius Mazur? And, you know, what kind of fight are you expecting? Uh, do you know, like when I was doing the sport at the start, I used to spend all my time looking at my opponent and all and all this stuff. Like, and I think like you could see, I was saying the same thing for the tennis fight. I don't look; I generally look at what they're going to do, but I don't overstudy them at all. I just worry about me. Like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put like the same thing. I always do. I'm going to come out with a fast pace. I'm going to come out boxing. If he wants to grapple, we can grapple. You know what I mean? And but it's going to be a high, hard fifteen minutes, and I'm going to do everything that I practiced in training. Uh, so yeah, yeah, if that you answers know- that. It does. As you're as you're looking, I guess, 
um, at progressing, right, as, as t- uh, taking on new matchups. Myself and Ian O'Neill and Quilch Bar, we started an, an Irish MMA podcast and I was chatting about you on the last episode. Um, and I was saying that we know what you are. Like, we know uh, who John Mitchell is as a fighter, your skill set. But what I want to start seeing is, you know, the jumps in competition level because yeah. we've seen, you you know, put guys away or in the last fight against Intellis just dominate. Uh, so I now want to see you in against higher levels of competition to, so we can see, okay, well, how does your skill set translate once you get, you know, faced with a bit more adversity? Do you look at your career in a similar fashion where you want to take those steps, uh, that you know, a, a jump in competition level? 100% like if, if you look at when I was amateur like I was always fighting the best guys I could fight you know what I mean I fought everyone in Ireland I fought the UK like for my pro debut I fought Eric Nolan uh, do you know then like like he that was he was well tutored at the time like do you know then uh, RB alright fair enough like but RB was still a glory kickbox you know what I mean Natellis was a good fight this next guy is supposed to be a KSW fight he has seven pro fights I have four I, I wanted a UFC vet for this fight but I just got to be patient, listen to my managers as well. Like, I'm only in this sport, like, do you know, out of all the guys that I fought at amateur, the one that I think the most about is Issa Sakov, and he, I actually lost to him. But Issa Sakov's like nine and one or something now. And I just remember being so happy with myself after that fight because I fought a killer. And like, you you think like what motivates you is it intrinsic or extrinsic motivation? Is it like you beating shit lads and all your friends thinking you're the man? Or is it you actually fighting these killers and you thinking yourself you're the man, you know what I mean? And being actually self-happy. So, like, that's why, like, I want to fight this guy next. And then after that, I want to jump up again. And, like, this is going to be the year for jump ups, you know what I mean? Like, like that big promotion, whether it's going to be PFL, Bellator, UFC, it's coming, you know? I think that's such a great mindset to have where, you know, the point you made there about not looking for that kind of external validation and just to be, like, an Instagram fighter where you have a 10-0 yeah. record, but who have you really faced? Um you've often you've you know you've talked about wanting to be the first Corkonian in the UFC but but before we talk about the UFC or getting to the UFC do you want to get to a certain level where you have faced you know difficult tasks uh, before signing on so that you're ready see the thing is like like uh like if you if you see who I, who I spar in the gym and stuff like that like I'm facing difficult tasks on the regular every Tuesday and Saturday and I know my level like I've sparred like a lot of UFC guys out here and I know how I've done how I've done exactly against all of them like you know Bruno Cavera like like he said to me he texted me the day I fought Constantinus and he was like brother he's like you've no need to be worried now because you're not going to go through the hell that me and Manier put you through every Tuesday and Saturday you know what I mean so even when all these guys come in I'm ready for any of them so like with, with my management like like legit, they send me the contract and I just sign it like I don't look because I'm ready for any of these guys. When I was an amateur, Aaron used to do the same thing, you know, like I really believe what I'm going to do. So, yeah. Yeah, I suppose it that kind doesn't of, matter. If, yeah. That goes yeah. to your previous point about, you know, once you know, right, I've put the work in, I know the level that I'm at, so I don't need to go and show it necessarily against, uh, you know, whoever the likes of myself or, or fans or, or other media members kind of call for. Yeah, well, like, let it, like, you know, like, the, the like, all the boys have, have good winning records now, but, like, let the le- next lad have, have a bigger winning record. Like, like I always said, I really want to fight Dagestani lads. You know what I mean? Because, like, I'm just the boy for them, you know, so maybe one of them next. Yeah, and I, look, I think uh, UAE Warriors are, are really growing as a promotion. They've signed with UFC Fight Pass. Your, your last fight was on, on UFC Fight Pass, and again, this time, um, it seems that they're, they're evolving and you know i i noticed that uh i think it's muhammad yaya is the lightweight champion he's defending his belt uh on, on one of these cards and then i've also seen that there's probably three or four other lightweight uh fights on the card so are you you know obviously all the focus is on uh this fight but are, you know are you kind of half side eyeing and seeing okay well you know who else is fighting here and could this be the next opponent or, or maybe even a title shot soon yeah, so like Bruno Cavera is the lightweight champion. Yep, Mohamed Yaya is the lightweight champion of the UA Warriors Arabia. They're very, very different. Like, ah, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, Look at this. like I need to start, I need to hire you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime, <laughs> anytime. No, but but uh, so like Bruno was, is a teammate, a coach, and like and like a brother. Like I, I would never be fighting him, even for my own health. I wouldn't do that one. Like no, but uh, he's he's unreal. He's a beast. But maybe when he retires, um, I'd go for that belt. But yeah, all those lightweights you just mentioned. Definitely, definitely, like, especially because some of those boys are in Dubai as well. So, like, I, when I was in Ireland, I wanted to be the best in Ireland. Now that I'm in Dubai, I want to be known as the best lad in Dubai. So, yeah, they, they can, we can fight if you want. I don't think I'm allowed to do call-outs, but, you know, yeah. You're not, you're not allowed to do call-outs in the cage, no? No, 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 no. Well, you probably are, like, but, you know, uh, it's not really my it's not really my thing to be talking shit like that. Okay, okay. And <laughs> come here, the nickname, John the Ripper. Where did that come from? Did I not explain this in the last one? Oh, yeah. So basically, right, you know, um, Maybe what it was, was um, 
Yeah, yeah, no, I can explain it again. I can explain it again. So basically, like my personality is like this. Is it's generally like in a good mood and, and not a complete psychopath. Like, but uh, and um, do you know when I'm sparring, it's like I have a personality switch. Like I'm such a mean guy. Like you know what I mean. And also when I'm cutting weights, I have like a personality transplant again. So everyone was like, uh, like thinking of a thing. I'm like, it's like a different John now. So one of the guys in the gym was calling me John the Ripper because that's like I'm like this, but once I spar, I'm all fuck, I'm all serious and all business like. And then obviously when I fought Arby and I ripped the face off him, like they were like John the Ripper, like. And also you know you could see with the Eric Nolan fight and the Alan Bukowski fight and the Arby fight, I love throwing elbows, like they're like my favorite. You know what I mean? So elbows cut, so John the Ripper. Yeah, yeah that's fair enough. Fair enough. And you probably did. It's probably just my poor uh, my poor memory from the last one. Yeah. You know, no look, looking at 2022, how active do you want to be? Uh, four fights, four good fights this year. You know what I mean? That, that'd be that'd be loved for me. Finish the year in 8-0, and then you're in a great spot. And let's talk about the three letters, the UFC. First, Kirkonian. That's the plan. That's the goal. It's going to happen this year, is yeah. it? That, that, look, like, like I said, patience is a virtue in this sport. All I'm worried about next is uh, Marius Mazur. And then it's whatever, like, I think you made some great points as well in, in your podcast that you were talking about me as well. So it's it's whatever my, uh, you know, you were saying, like, there's no rush, be patient. You know, like, you think, but I'm not I'm not in this sport just to get in and out. I'm here to be, like, a, a, a veteran of it. Like, so I'll take my time. I'll just do what my management says, you know. If they say UFC next, fine, I'll do UFC next. If they say, like, six more fights, six more fights, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, like, not to make this about me, like, what I was saying and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, is the vibe that I get from you is that you're in this to become a champion. Like, you, you, yeah. your, your goal is UFC champion. It's not just to make up the numbers in the UFC. It's not just to get signs. You can post on Instagram. It's You want to go all the way. So by yeah. proxy, you want to be getting to the UFC when you're in a position where that'll give you the best opportunity to, to fulfill your potential. And you're so right. And I, I think everything you said in that podcast was, was completely right. And from all the boys, like, uh, you see Jimmy Manoa, he turned down that like three times. You know what I mean? Uh, you you see, uh, or twice was it? You see people turn it down. Like I'm not saying I'll turn it down, but if my management thinks I should, then I should. I want to go into that, and I don't want to go in, do two fights and get out, and then be like, oh, I got the UFC, I got the badge. I want to go in there and smash lads, and I want I want to be there to stay. You know, so I'm in no rush. Like I'm 26, like I'm gonna fight till I'm 35. You know. Yeah. Lastly, you you just you kind of touched on that you didn't want to give everything away in your last fight, and you were happy that you didn't have to. What are we going to see? What are we going to be maybe surprised by uh, come Saturday? Uh, just just how composed I look for for a fighter that's only four zero. You know what I mean? Like like uh, like I I feel like his fighters go even in fight week. I'm cool as a breeze, and uh, like uh, it's four zero. But altogether, it's my forty third fight, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna look like that in it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's funny that they're saying he's more experienced because he's five and two. I think I had seven fights when I was nineteen. You know what I mean? So Jesus, <laughs> 40, 43 fights is a lot of fights. Yeah, it is, you know, and and uh, like n- none of them were, were were against were against shit lads either, like so. But well, yeah. may- maybe maybe RB like. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Your your words, not mine. Um, yeah, sure, look. So you, look, you get the win on on Saturday afternoon. You mentioned you're going home to Ireland. How are you going to celebrate when you get home? Oh, I couldn't be saying that this year MMA podcast. You won't have me back on. <laughs> <laughs> this is for my MMA news dot com. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's all good it's all good um john i really appreciate the time uh, as always it's it's always a pleasure to speak to you uh good luck on saturday ufc fight pass 2 p.m i believe the card starts uae warriors 28 yeah. uh john Ma- mitchell versus marius mazur uh will flurry is also headlining the card uh, in a rematch against Tariq okay. Sullivan. so tune in uh lots of irish and then we've uh, kenny mokohan mokonwana uh, apologies Kenny if I probably butchered your name uh, is also fighting this weekend too so John thanks for the time and, and best of luck uh, this week my pleasure Andy thank you for the time